Hi, boys and girls. It's me, Mr. Sunito, and I've got another book for you for today. This book is called The Tale of Rabbit and Coyote. And I was thinking, sometimes magicians pull rabbits out of hats. And I thought, I wonder if I could do that. So I got my hat, and I thought what I would do is see if I can pull a rabbit out of here. Okay? Are you ready? Let me get set up for this trick. Okay. Now look at the hat. Count with me. We're going to count to three. And here we go. One, two, three. George, you're not supposed to be in that hat. What'd you do with the rabbit? <sighs> Let's just get to the book. Now, this, this book, The Tale of Rabbit and Coyote, is a folk tale that comes to us from another country. It comes to us from Mexico. So I thought I would show you or remind you where Mexico is on our map. So remember, we go here. Something like that to find out where we live in Chicago. But Mexico is, do you see it? Do you see it? It is south of the United States. That means we go down to find Mexico. And that's where Mexico is on the map. You might say Mexico is our neighbor. So let's go back to the book. So now we know that the tale of rabbit and coyote is a folk tale from the country of Mexico. We saw that on the map. A folk tale is a story that has been told over many years. Um, many folk tales have animal characters. So this folk tale, this story, was retold by Tony Johnston. Retold means that the author is telling an old story, but in a new way. And the story was illustrated by Tommy De Paola. Take a look at the cover. From the title and the illustration, you could tell that the characters in the story are the coyote and the rabbit. Let's read to find out how these two animals get along. The tale of rabbit and coyote. Rabbit and Coyote. One full moon night, Rabbit found a field of chiles. He was so pleased to see them, all glossy and green, that he jumped right in and ate the biggest one. And I can tell from just reading that page that if a chile is something that the rabbit eats, it's probably food. And if I look at the picture, I'm guessing that a chile is also a plant. I'm just going to fix this right here. Okay. When the sun rose, the farmer came to check the chiles. They were scattered everywhere, and the biggest, glossiest, greenest ones were gone. Among the plants, he saw rabbit tracks. See those rabbit footprints? Those are called rabbit tracks. So what did he do? He made himself a beeswax doll, and he sent that doll in the middle of the field to catch the chile thief. Now it says the farmer makes a beeswax doll. And I want to show you, I don't know if you can see that word if you look very carefully. Um, the two small words in beeswax tell you that it is a kind of wax made by bees. 
and wax would be something that you've probably seen um, in candles. They use wax to make candles. So think about it that way. Bees use this sticky stuff in their nests, too. Let's find out how this doll is going to help the farmer catch rabbit. When night fell, Rabbit returned. He saw the farmer made of wax and crept up to say hello. And to ask for some chiles, too. But the wax farmer had nothing to say to Rabbit. Nothing at all. Rabbit was angry. He punched the farmer. Hard. His right paw stuck in the wax. Still, the farmer said nothing. So he punched him once again. His left paw stuck too. Rabbit was fuming mad, but the wax farmer was silent as the stars. So he hauled off with both feet and walloped him. Aye, aye, aye. <sniffs> then Rabbit was trapped for sure. Why is Rabbit mad? What do you think the real farmer will do with Rabbit now that he's trapped. Mm -mm -mm. Let's read and find out. When the real farmer came to check his trap, he was delighted to see Rabbit there. Que delicioso. How delicious, he said, rubbing his hands together. He popped Rabbit into a sack and took him home. When he got there, he hung up the sack, built a fine fire, and set a pot of water to boil. Then he went looking for herbs. Sometimes we call them herbs or spices. From where he was hanging in the sack, Rabbit saw Coyote coming. Do you see Coyote back there? Looks like farmer's getting ready to cook rabbit. What are you doing there? asked Coyote. This man wants me to marry his daughter, rabbit said, but I'm too young. Why don't you take my place? Look, the water's ready to make hot chocolate. There will be a grand party. Uh, hmm. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, boys and girls? That rabbit, what a trickster. When the farmer came back and took down the sack, <laughs> look who's in the sack, he saw Coyote inside it. You'll pay for this, he said. He popped Coyote into the hot water. Aye, aye, aye. Coyote flew right out of that water and took off after Rabbit. Now. Why was the coyote in the sack? He was tricked. He followed his tracks, so the coyote followed the rabbit's tracks, till he found him high in a hickory uh, tree. I think that's how we pronounce that. I'm going to eat you now, said coyote for he was very furious. So what did Rabbit do? Well, he knew that Coyote couldn't tell the difference between the fruit of the hickory, hard as a rock, and the soft, sweet zapote. Why eat me? asked Rabbit, when right here I have sweet zapote fruit instead. Well, toss me one, growled Coyote. Rabbit did that. He tossed down the hickory with all his might. Plonk! It struck Coyote and knocked him out cold as a cabbage. When Coyote woke up, he tracked Rabbit till he saw that furry scoundrel resting again, uh, resting against a large rock at the edge of a hill.
Please don't eat me, pleaded Rabbit, leaning against the rock. Can't you see that if I don't hold back this rock, it will roll down and crush the world? Here, you hold it while I find some people to help us. Boys and girls, what are you thinking about this rabbit? Hmm. Coyote believed Rabbit and took his place. Rabbit hopped off free as a bee. Now, if you look right here, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but Rabbit says, hasta luego, as he hops away. Hasta luego are Spanish words that mean See you later. This story does have some Spanish words in it because it comes from Mexico, where people speak Spanish. Many people in other countries in the world also speak Spanish. And of course, we speak Spanish in America sometimes. Soon, Coyote knew he'd made a mistake. He went after Rabbit, muttering all the way. When at last he found him, Coyote said, Now I'll eat you. But then, who will take care of the little children in this little school? Asked Rabbit, pointing to a wasp's nest on a low tree branch. Someone needs to give it a knock if a pupil tries to leave. Now, a pupil means student. That's just a fancy word that means student. But, boys and girls, what do you think will happen if Coyote knocks the wasp nest? That can't be good. Mm. Well, Coyote loved to give knocks, so he took the job. He lay near the branch and waited. When a, wasp, when a wasp flew out, he whacked that wasp nest with a little stick, and all the wasps came after him. They chased him into a pond. Only his nose stuck out of the water, so they stung that many times. It was pitch black night when Coyote found Rabbit at the edge of the lake. Now he was really going to eat him. But Rabbit said, Why eat me, Coyote, when I have been waiting for you so we can share the cheese that you see there? Rabbit pointed to the moon's reflection upon the water. Of course, explained Rabbit, we must first drink all the juice of the cheese in order to eat the cheese itself. So, Coyote began drinking the water to reach the cheese itself. Hmm. After a time, he said, I simply can't drink anymore. Oh, look at Coyote. Just a few more sips, said Rabbit, and you'll reach the cheese for sure. And here's Rabbit saying, mas, mas, mas. That means more, more, more in Spanish. He wants Coyote to keep drinking. Coyote drank more, more, more. He drank so much that water poured from his ears. But when he turned to discuss this with Rabbit, Rabbit ran away. Coyote ran after him as best he could, but he was swollen as a sponge. Look how big he is. That is swollen. Like when a sponge soaks up all the water. Now, Rabbit knew of a ladder that reached into the sky. He began to climb it, up, 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 and he hopped all the way to the moon. Then he hid the ladder. Far below, he saw a Coyote looking for him up in the sky. But try as he might, Coyote never found the ladder. And 
That is why, to this very day, Coyote sits gazing at the moon. Look at him gazing, looking at the moon. And now and then, he howls at it, for he is still very furious with Rabbit. <laughs> Why does Coyote howl at the moon, boys and girls? Do you think this is really why all coyotes howl at the moon? Well, a folktale like this one sometimes tries to explain something by telling an interesting story about it. Usually it's make-believe. Oh my goodness. Let's do some writing. All right, boys and girls, let's do some writing. Of course, you're going to need your writer's notebook and a pencil. And take those crayons out, too, if you got them. Let's go to a clean sheet of paper in your notebook. And uh, pause the video if you need to. But I'm going to get started. At the top of your paper... Why don't you write down the title of the book and your name? And I've written that for you here. The Tale of Rabbit and Coyote. And then, of course, you could put your name. And here's the directions. And don't worry, I'm going to help you. The directions say, write two or three sentences. So that's what we're going to work on. And I want you to tell how rabbit and coyote are different. They're certainly not the same. They do different things. They act differently. Um, they look different. So you can write about any of those things. So I'm going to give you some words. Of course, I don't need to spell rabbit or coyote for you. And I don't need to spell the word different because you've got it right there. But you might say something like this. The rabbit. And again, just look up here. The rabbit is different. Got that right there. D -d different. He's different than the, the. What two letters make the, the sound? T-H. Than coyote. And again, I've spelled these words for you. Coyote. Because... So this is where we're going to explain how they're different. So I'm going to use the word because. Because. And then you have to think how they're different. Now, I'll give you a couple hints. You might say that they look different. How do they look different? If you want to go back and watch the video, that's fine. Another hint I'm going to give you is they do different things. They act differently. So think about that. See if you can get two, two sentences is good. Three sentences would be great. But how are the rabbit and the coyote different? They are definitely not the same. And then when you're done with that, you can add a picture or two. And I started to work on my picture at the bottom. 
It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's just for fun. And I've got the coyote right here. Let me see if I can color him in. He's kind of this bluish color, I think. So maybe he would look like this. Uh, something like that. And the rabbit, he's a very different color. He's kind of purple. So let's see if I got some purple here. Maybe, maybe he's like a dark purple. So we'll color him in like that. And you can even add labels. You can say this is the coyote. And this is the rabbit. So you do your best. And don't forget to send me a picture in Class Dojo. Have a great day, boys and girls, and I will talk to you soon.